How to install main components of equipment Move the device to a specified point based on the device layout diagram. Work position diagram of the fork lift in unwinding section. Work position diagram of fork lift in handle feeding section. Work position diagram of fork lift in handle forming part. Work position diagram of fork lift in handle section. Work position diagram of fork lift in main equipment. Work position diagram of fork lift in collection department. Wiring and connection. Wiring. Align the plug position and connect the servo motor aviation plug. Connect each server aviation plug in the same way. Connect the host signal aviation plug. Connect other aviation plugs in the same way. Connect the main power as required. Turn on the main power supply. Turn on the side power supply. Connect the air pipe. Connect the unwinding part and the host part. Shape the handle. and pass the air pipe between the handle part. Connect the air pipe of the side groove pressure barrel. Connect the air pipe of the handle forming water groove pressure barrel. Connect the main air pipe to the unwinding part. Unwinding part. Automatic deviation correction system setting. Click Setup. Click the Setup Wizard. Click Start Setting. Long press Phone Adaptive. Click Start. The deviation correction system starts to detect the limit. Click Return after the text is successful. Click Next. Click the left and right arrows and the correction device can swing left and right normally. Click Next. Select the photoelectric sensor. Click Next. Click Next. Change to Automatic Mode. Change the polarity to Add and change Gain Value to 20. Double click to return. The setting of automatic deviation correction system is completed. Automatic tension system settings. Click setup. Enter password 0100. Select tracker parameters. Click setup. Select the detector to zero. Enter the zero setting interface and hold down setup to start setting. Click return after the detection value returns to zero. Select hanging weight calibration and set the weight to 25 kg. The 25 kg weight through the tension detector. Keep the weight still and pull the rope tight. Long press setup. Text value and set value are both 25 kg. The setting of automatic 
tension system is completed. Hydraulic paper loader. Long press the feeding and feeding buttons respectively to check whether the feeding swing arm runs smoothly. If there is no abnormality, check whether the oil gauge pressure is 500 to 1000 psi. After the loading swing arm is placed at the lowest end. If the feeding swing arm runs stuck, adjust the oil cylinder knob. Load the paper. Open the gas expansion shaft buckle. Move the air swear shaft to the feeding swing arm. Long press the blanking button to lower the air swell shaft. The air expansion exits through the paper roll. Move the paper roll to the feeding rack. Long press the feeding button. Move the paper roll to the feeding rack. Lock the buckle on both sides. Lateral position of raw material. Bonding width plus side width of paper bag plus half surface width of paper bag equal to center of paper bag. The center position of the paper bag should be on the same plane as the center position of the hose machine. After setting the position of the paper roll correctly, inflate the air inflation shaft. Forming department. Disassemble and assemble forming templates and remove the template link plate. Remove the fixing screws on the fixing frame of the forming template. Change the correct bag width of the forming template. Lock back and fix the fixing screws on the forming form work fixing frame. Tighten the screws of the template link plate. Adjust the width of the forming template. Loosen the fixed hand wheel. Rotate the template to adjust the hand wheel and adjust the width of the template to the appropriate position. Rock fixed hand wheel. Adjust the toe of the forming template. Relax the knob on the stable support arm to align the toe of the forming template with the center line of the machine. The width of the toe of the forming template is slightly greater than the width of the ankle of the forming template. Check whether the forming template is aligned with the traction wheel. If not, loosen the fixing screws, loosen the fixed knot of adjusting screw. Adjust the screw clockwise rotation can improve the forming template tone. Turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to lower the toe of the forming template. After setting, relock the fixed nut and screw. Relock the two fixing screws. Set pressure and friction wheel. The friction wheel will tighten the edge of the material self-forming template inward. Adjust the screw handle to change the length of the friction wheel and the angle of the forming template. These rubber wheels should be at an angle of 5 to 10 degrees from the main engine center line. Increase or decrease the count weight on the friction wheel as required. Set the height of the clip disc. Check whether the clamp disc is in the center of two forming template. If not, Relax the height adjustment hand wheel of the support fixing frame on the wall of the machine and adjust the support fixing frame upward or downward according to the need by using the height adjustment hand wheel. After the adjustment, lock the height adjustment hand wheel. Set the height of the clip disc in four positions in turn. Set the side position of the clip disc. Rotate the edge clamp disc to adjust the hand wheel until the edge of the forming template 
is aligned with the correct scale on the edge clamp disc. The position of the edge clip disc should be half the side width of the paper bag. Set a guide bar for forming the template. Adjust the screw handle to change the relative position of guide rod and the paper tube. Adjust the guide rod correctly to make the material past the forming template ankle smoothly. Set the guide wheel for forming the template. Loosen the guide wheel fixing screw. Adjust the button of the guide wheel flush with the template. The side is 1 mm higher than the edge of the template. Lock the screws. Pull the paper to the traction wheel by steps. Close the tension. Pull the paper roll over the unwinding part and the sticking part in accordance with the specified path. Lift the friction wheel of the forming part. Before the paper roll into the forming part, fold up the front end of the paper roll. Pull the paper roll out for a distance. Align the center of the paper bag with the center of the host machine and pull the paper roll into the forming part. Hold the paper roll above the template with one hand. Hold the paper roll below the template with one hand and pull the paper roll forward with the other hand. until the paper roll is pulled to the traction wheel. Put down the traction wheel. Lower the friction wheel. Reopen the tension. Set the tension to the appropriate size. Adjust the tension system to automatic mode. Set edge groove device. The knobs of the edge groove device have three states. The edge groove device does not work when it stops. The edge groove device always works when it is manual and the working state of the edge groove device automatically changes with the running state of the equip equipment. Groove applicator of edge groove device is about 1 mm away from the roller. Rotate the side groove to adjust the hand wheel. Rotate the side groove to adjust the hand wheel, which can move the groove applicator horizontally on the Run and move the groove applicator to the edge of the paper barrel. Clockwise adjust the knob on the groove applicator. Can adjust the amount of groove. Adjust the knob on the groove applicator counterclockwise to increase the amount of groove. The main equipment. Adjust the side position of traction wheel. Raise the upper seat traction wheel. Loosen the upper seat traction wheel to fix the top wire. Slide the traction wheel until the traction wheel is pressed to the paper roll 20 to 30 mm. Lock and fix the top wire. Adjust other three traction wheels in the same way. Adjust the pressure of the traction wheel. 
clockwise rotation of the pressure regulating valve knob can increase the cylinder pressure. Reduce the pressure on the cylinder by turning the pressure regulating valve knob counterclockwise. Set the cylinder pressure to 40 to 60 psi and set the steam pressure on the front and rear sides. Pick the paper rod. In the case of uneven side of the paper tube, the upper layer of the paper tube or the lower layer of the paper tube can make the side of the paper tube aligned. Install the cutter. Loosen the screws of fixing block. Install the cutter between the fixed blocks. The vertical side of the cutter must be on the leading edge of the rotation direction and the inclined side must be on the training edge of the running direction. Cutter extension length is generally 11 to 12 mm. Lock the screws of the fixing block. Align with the upper and lower cutting rollers. Loosen the fixed screw of the rear wheel hub of the gear so that the upper seat cutting drum is separated from the gear machine. Manual turn the roller of the upper seat to align the cutting plane with the center line of the cutting module opening. Lock the fixing screws of the rear gear hub. Adjust the elliptical gear of the cutter. The highest part of active elliptic gear is facing the driven elliptic gear. At this time, the speed of the cutter is the highest. Otherwise, it is the lowest speed. The larger the back length size, the faster the speed of the cutter. When cutting, the reverse is slower. According to the back length size, adjust the appropriate knife speed so that the cutter can cut the paper tube smoothly. Stand the lateral position of transfer drum. Loosen the fixing screws of the conveying drum and move the conveying drum horizontally. Ensure that the transfer drum can be pressed to four layers of paper cylinder. Move the lower seat transfer drum to align with the upper seat transfer drum. Stand the transmission drum in turn in the same way. Lock the fixing screws of the transmission drum. Adjust the pressure of the transfer drum. Press the paper tube with the higher part of the upper conveying drum. Loosen the fixed knot of the front and rear adjusting screws. Turn the screw clockwise to increase the pressure. Turn the screw counterclockwise to reduce the pressure. After the front and rear rollers, are adjusted to the same pressure. Pull the paper drum to confirm that the transfer drum can press the paper drum. Relock the fixed nuts of the front and rear adjusting screws. Adjust the transfer drum and cutting time point. Loosen the screws of the rear gear so that the upper seat transfer drum can rotate freely. Turn the machine manually until the cutter is about to cut off the paper tube. Manually rotate the upper conveying drum so that the leading edge of the higher part of the conveying drum just presses the paper drum. Lock the fixing screws of the wheel hub of the gear. Install pressure line knife. Put the crimping knife into the creasing slot. Tighten the fixing screws of the crimping knife. Replace the crimping module. Check whether the size of crimping module installed on the machine is the same as the size of the required face width and side width. If not, you need to replace the crimping module. The steps are as follows. Loosen the fixing screws of the crimping module. Replace the crimping module with a suitable size. Tighten the fixing screws of the crimping module. Adjust the first up seat folding knife to align the first lower seat groove. Loosen the gear hub on the front side 
of the upper seat crimping drum. Rotate the machine manually so that the first fold line module of the lower seat crimping roller is just between the upper and lower seat fold line axis. Rotate the machine manually so that the first fold line knife is aligned with the first fold line groove. Keep the position still and tighten the screws of the front gear drum. Adjust the second fold line knife and the second fold line groove. Loosen the hexagonal screws on the folding line transfer drum and loosen the fixing screws on the outside fixing seat of the folding line drum. The second folding knife can be rotated freely to adjust the position. Tighten the hexagonal screws on the folding line transfer roller until the second fold line knife is aligned with the second fold line groove. Tighten the fixing screws of the outer fixing seat of the folding drum. Set the lateral position of the conveying disc of the crimping roller. Loosen the fixing screws of the crimping transfer disc. Move the disc sideways so that the outside of the disc is just within the fold line of the inner clamping edge. Tighten the fixing screws of the conveying disc drum. Adjust the pressure of the conveying disc of the crimping roller. Loosen the fixing nuts of the front and rear adjustment screws. Turn the adjustment screw clockwise to increase the pressure. Turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise to reduce the pressure. Pull the paper tube to confirm that the transfer roller can press the paper tube. Tighten and loosen the fixing nut of the adjusting screw on the front and rear side after checking the error. Adjust the open edge mechanical finger of the crimping roller. Loosen the fixing screws of the mechanical finger holder on the open side and move the mechanical paper holder so that the fingertip is about 3 mm away from the out edge of the paper tube. Tighten the screws of the open side mechanical finger fixing seat. Adjust the shape of the mechanical finger so that the mechanical finger can smoothly pick up the clamping part of the paper tube and then the paper tube smoothly move to the guide plate. Check the position of the first fold line and the first clamping line of the drum. Rotate the machine in an inch motion to move the paper tube to the drum. Check the relative position of the first fold line of the paper tube and the first clamping line of the drum. The first fold line must be about 2 to 3 mm before the first clamping line of the drum. Please confirm whether the distance is correct. If not, please adjust loosen the rear gear screw of the lower seat crimping drum. Rotate the crimping roller manually, forward or backward the crimping roller to the correction position. Tighten the rear gear screw of the lower seat crimping roller. Adjust the time point of the paper tube to the center finger. On the same paper tube, mark the actual position of first fold line and measure the distance between the first fold line that has been pressed out and the mark. This distance is the distance the paper tube must forward or backward so that the paper tube is aligned the first folding knife and loosen the bolts above the hub. If the first fold line that has been pressed is behind the correction position of the first fold line, turn the hand wheel counterclockwise. If the first fold line that has been pressed is ahead of the correction position of the first fold line, turn the hand wheel in a clockwise direction. Turn the machine to bring out at least three paper bags and then check whether the position of the first fold line is correct on the third paper bag. If the two fold lines do not coincide, 
you must loosen the hub again and readjust until the two positions coincide. Set the lateral position of the button roller. Loosen the screw of the cam fixing seat of the button roller. Move the button opening roller sideways and move the button opening roller to a position 2 mm away from the edge of the paper tube. Tighten the screws. Time setting of opening roller mechanical finger. Rotate the machine manually so that the mechanical finger of the drum is located between the drum and the button opening drum. Loosen the screw of the button opening drum gear so that the button opening drum can rotate freely. Rotate the button roller to align your fingertips with the mechanical fingertips of the drum wheel. Tighten the screws of the button roller gear. Adjust the button roller. Check the release position of the mechanical finger. If the button of the bag cannot be fully opened, the adjustment hand wheel must be rotated clockwise. If the paper tube will be torn, you need to turn the adjustment hand wheel counterclockwise. When the can is positioned correctly, the button of the bag should be fully unfolded without being torn. Adjust the button opening auxiliary pressure bar. Loosen the screws of the auxiliary pressure bar fixing frame. Rotate the fixing frame to align the auxiliary pressing bar with the second fold line. Tighten the screws. Adjust the back button folder. Loosen the fixing seat screws of the folded copper plate and slide the fixing seat along the axis so that the inner surface of the folded copper plate at the button of the back is about 6 mm away from the side edge of the paper bag. Loosen the fixing screws of the folded copper plate. Adjust the position of the folded copper plate at the button of the bag so that the open button of the bag just touches the folded copper plate and start to press the button of the bag down. The folded copper plate must press the button of the open bag against the surface of the drum. Tighten the screws after the adjustment is complete. Loosen the fixing screw of the folding guide rod. Loosen the fixing seat screw of the folding guide rod and slide the fixing seat along the axis so that the button of the bag can be unfolded smoothly. Paper bag flattening guide. Loosen the screws on the fixing seat. Move the pressure strip fixing seat so that the pressure iron is located at a distance of about 3 to 5 mm outside the viscose shape of the button of the bag. Tighten the screws of the holding bar fixing seat. The second spider type synchronous adjustment fixing frame of the drum clamp. Loosen the fixing screw of the second cam's synchronous adjustment fixing frame and turn the second drum clamp's synchronous adjustment fixing frame. The correct distance should be the size of the button of the bag minus 11 mm. Tighten the fixing screw on the front side of the drum so that the synchronous adjustment fixing frame of the second drum clamp is fixed in the correct position. Install the pad. Choose the largest block that can be put in. Install cushion blocks before and after the second fixture. The peeling groove of the spacer is aligned with the peeling groove of the drum wheel. Tighten the screws. Adjust the drum mechanical finger. Rotate the machine manually so that the mechanical finger of the drum wheel of the first working station reaches the top of the drum wheel. Loosen the fixing screws of the synchronous adjustment fixing frame of the drum mechanical finger. 
Move the fixed frame of the drum mechanical finger along the axis so that the drum mechanical fingertip intersects with the width of the required surface. Tighten the screws on the drum. Synchronous adjustment fixing frame for setting the center finger. The length of the first fold is calculated by subtracting the length of the paper tube from the length of the paper bag. Write down the length of the first fold as the position for adjusting the center finger. Rotate the machine manually so that the center finger is at the top of the drum. Loosen the hexagonal screws of the center clamp finger fixing frame. The distance from the top of the center clamp finger to the first clamp line is the length of the button fold of the bag minus 3 to 5 mm. After adjustment, tighten the screws. Adjust the position of the paper roll guide. Loosen the fixing screws of the paper tube guide. Move the guide plate along the axis so that the lower end of the guide plate enters the side of the paper tube 20 to 30 mm and the upper end of the guide plate is about 3 mm away from the fingertip of the drum machine. Tighten the screws. Release tine of the center finger. When the first folding knife pushes the first folding line into the first clamp of the drum, the can follower roller just touches the front edge of the can. Loosen the fixed knot of the can to adjust the clamping point of the release can. Move the can to the correct position along the positioning pin. Tighten the fixed knot. Install the soft cushion on the button coated side of the bag. Cut the soft cushion on the foam material according to the required groove shape. Pass the foam cushion on the appropriate position of the sizing roller. Rotate the machine to check whether the grooving is normal. If not, repass the sponge cushion to a suitable position. Install the first and second folding knives. The length of the first folding knife is the width of the paper bag plus 2 to 5 mm. Put the first folding knife into the clamping plate of the knife holder. Adjust the first folding knife so that the folding knife is parallel to the knife holder and extend the proper distance. Tighten the bolts to fix the first folding knife. Install the second folding knife in the same way. Adjust the time to fold in the knife to the drum fixture. Loosen the fixing bolts on the second folding knife fixing frame to adjust the action time of the folding knife to the drum fixture. Rotate the machine slowly so that the second clamp of the drum is located on the center line between the axis of the drum and the axis of the folding knife. Turn the second folding knife by hand to bring it close to the second jig of the opening drum so that the folding knife is just crosses the rear edge when the second jig of the drum is open. If necessary, you can turn the drum slightly to set the correct second folding knife position. Tighten the bolts of the second folding knife holder. Adjust the first folding knife in the same way. Button closing device. Rotate the machine so that the first fold is close to the closing plate at the button of the bag. Loosen the screws of the sprocket hub. The closing roller at the button of the bag should be slightly in contact with ungrooved part of the inner surface of the first fold to tighten the screws of sprocket hub. Rotate the machine to confirm the closing action of the first fold. Adjust the pressure of the dispensing wheel. Click dispensing cylinder on the touch screen to turn off the dispensing cylinder button and loosen the fixing nuts of the stop screws on the front and rear sides. Turn the stop screw clockwise to increase the pressure or turn the stop screw counterclockwise to reduce the pressure.
tighten the fixing nut of the stop screw. Click the dispensing cylinder on the touch screen to light up the dispensing cylinder button. Rotate the machine so that the bag is completely between the delivery wheel and the drum. Pull the bag to confirm that there is slight resistance on the bag. Bag collection part. Adjust face plate. Rotate the machine with inch movement so that the bag can be sent out from the timing belt smoothly. Loosen the fixing screws of the flower plate. Adjust the gap of the flower disc to align with the bag that comes out. Tighten the fixing screws of the face plate. Adjust the bag receiving bevel. Loosen the two baffle fixing screws. Move the back receiving baffle inward or outward to a suitable position according to the width of the back surface. Fix the two baffle fixing screws. Check the handle discharge swing roller. Check the pressure of the oscillating roller. The paper roll cannot rotate when the oscillating stick is lower to the minimum. The paper roll is completely loosened when the oscillating roller rises to half of its stock. If not, you need to adjust the pressure of the oscillating roller. Remove the cover on the rear side of the hand discharging part. Loosen the fixing screws of the tension shaft. Rotate the tension shaft to change the pressure of the swing roller. After the adjustment is completed, lock the tightening shaft fixing screw. Check the pressure of the swing roller and reinstall the cover after the correct setting. Handle patch paper roll setting. Loosen the tension hand wheel. Select a paper roll of appropriate size and place it on the handle patch release rack. Adjust the position of the paper roll. The distance between the two rows of the patch paper and the unwinding wall border align with the center line of the handle forming part. Lock the tight hand wheel. Handle the material to correct the deviation. Enter manual mode. Click setting. Click self-learning and click yes. Wait for the completion of self-learning. Choose the correct sensor orientation. Turn on the automatic mode and confirm that the correction controller is working normally. Setting is complete. Wear paper. Pass the patch paper roll. Pass the patch paper roll through the handle unwinding part according to the pass. Enter the handle forming part. and pass the handle patch through the traction wheel in turn. Run smoothly and level the pass. Handle forming department Adjust the position of the hot melt glue nozzle. The tip of the hot melt glue gun should be perpendicular to the surface of the first traction wheel and 1 mm away from the surface of the first traction wheel. 
If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screw of the gun head and loosen the fixing screw of the gun head fixing seat. Adjust the hot melt glue gun head to a suitable position. Tighten the fixing screw of the gun head and the fixing screw of the gun head fixing seat. Check the length of the hot melt glue spray. The spray length of the hot melt glue is 30 mm. If not, it needs to be adjusted. Loosen the fixing screws of the sensor bracket. If the length of the hot melt glue spray is too short, pull the sensor bracket to the left. If the length of the hot melt glue spray is too long, pull the sensor bracket to the right. After the adjustment is completed, tighten the fixing screws of the sensor bracket. Draw a rope. Pass the rope through the handle discharge part. According to the path and enter the handle forming part. Adjust the position of the hot melt glue spray. Check that the center position of the hot melt glue coincides with the handle rope. If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screws of the induction plate. Rotate the induction plate to a suitable position. Tighten the fixing screws of the induction plate. Check the lateral position of the traction roller. Each set of traction rollers must be aligned and centered on opposite sides of the wall panels. If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixed top wire of the traction roller. Move the traction roller to the correct position. Tighten the fixing screws of the traction roller. Use the same method to adjust the remaining traction rollers. Check the position of traction roller groove. The roller groove of the traction roller must be aligned with the rope. If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screws of the lower traction roller. Rotate the traction roller so that the groove of the traction roller is aligned with the rope. Adjust the pressure of the traction roller. Appropriate traction roller pressure can flatten the groove on the handle, and the handle will not produce indentations, wrinkles, or wandering. If adjustment is required, loosen the fixing nuts of the adjustment screws on both sides of the traction roller. Turn the adjusting screw clockwise to increase the pressure of the traction roller. Turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to reduce the pressure of the traction roller. After the adjustment is completed, tighten the fixing nuts of the adjustment screws on both sides of the traction roller. Use the same method to set the pressure of the remaining traction rollers. Check the position of the punch roller. The handle positioning hole should be located in the middle of the two hand ropes and the opening position of the positioning hole is back to the forward direction of the handle. If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screws of the upper and lower perforated roller. Rotate the upper and lower seat punching rollers forward at the same time to move the handle positioning hole forward. At the same time, rotate the upper and lower seat punching rollers backward to move the handle positioning hole backward. Tighten the fixing screws of the upper and lower seat punching rollers. Adjust the handle forming guide wheel. Adjust the position of the handle guide wheel so that the convex table surfaces of all the guide wheels and the convex table surfaces of the positioning plate of transverse handle part are on the same vertical plane. Loosen the guide wheel shaft fixing screws. Move the guide wheel outward or inward. Tighten the fixing screws of the guide wheel. Wear paper. Pull the rubber traction wheel lever to lift the rubber traction wheel. Pull the handle patch from the handle forming part to the guide wheel. Pull it 
through the positioning plate, pass through the rubber traction wheel, and lower the rubber traction wheel pull roll. Adjust the rubber traction wheel with the lateral handle. Adjust the pressure of the rubber traction wheel. The rubber traction pressure wheel can pull the handle steadily and ensure that the position of the positioning hole remains unchanged. Loosen the fixing nut of the adjusting screws on both sides of the rubber traction wheel. Turn the adjusting screw clockwise to reduce the pressure on the rubber traction wheel and turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to increase the pressure on the rubber traction wheel. When adjusting the pressure, the adjusting screw on both sides must be turned at the same time. After the adjustment is completed, tighten the fixing nut of the adjusting screw. Check the cutting position of the horizontal feed bar cutter. The cut handles should be symmetrical with no deviation. If not, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screws of the handle cutter seat. Rotate the cutter seat to change the cutting position. After the setting is correct, lock the cutter seat. Check the horizontal delivery conveyor belt. The conveyor belt can smoothly transfer the handle patch from the horizontal delivery position to the vertical delivery position. Loosen the guide wheel of the lower conveyor belt. Adjust the front end of the conveyor belt to exceed the front end of the longitudinal handle. Tighten the conveyor belt and lock the guide wheel of the conveyor belt. Check the horizontal handle conveying can. The high points of the conveying can are aligned and the high point will not press the handle roll. If not, please adjust. Pull the lever of the conveying can to raise the conveying can. Loosen the fixing screw of the upper conveying can. Rotate the upper conveying can so that the upper conveying can will not press the rope. Tighten the fixing screws of the upper conveying can. Loosen the fixing screws of the lower conveying can. Rotate the lower conveying can to align the high points of the two conveying cans. Tighten the fixing screws of the lower conveying can. Check the hanging angle of the vertical handle and push down the back. Pushing down the back hanging foot will move the cut handle patch forward. When the next patch falls, the previous patch should have been pushed forward and the falling handle patch should not be the same as the previous one. If the handle patch interferes, it should not interfere with the hanging feet of the pushing down bag. If interference occurs, please adjust. Loosen the fixing screws of the drive sprocket of the lower pushing back hanging leg. At this time, the hanging foot of the push down back can be rotated forward or backward. If the falling handle patch will interfere with the previous handle, then rotate the transmission chain forward. If the falling handle patch will be pushed down if the back hanging foot interferes, turn the transmission chain backward. After the adjustment is completed, tighten the fixing screws of the lower pushback hanging leg drive sprocket. Check the hanging angle of the vertical handle and push the back. The rotation speed of the hanging foot of the upper pushback is faster than the rotation speed of the hanging foot of the lower pushback. The hanging angle of the upper pushback should be parallel to the hanging angle of the lower pushback when it is completely downward and the handle patch starts to hang the foot from the upper pushback take the push forward the hanging feet of the upper pushback should be in contact with the handle patch at the same time if not please adjust Loosen the fixing bolts of the drive sprocket of the upper pushback hanging foot. 
At this time, you can turn the drive sprocket that pushes the back and hands the foot. After the adjustment is completed, lock the drive sprocket of the upper pushback hanging foot. Track the pressing time of the press roller by the longitudinal feed handle. When the distance between the handle and pressing wheel is 10 to 30 mm, the pressing wheel is pressed down. If not, please adjust. Loosen the cam fixing screws. Rotate the cam manually. After the adjustment is completed, tighten the cam fixing screws. Set the upper collagen point. Rotate the machine. When the gluing board faces the paper roll, set the origin of gluing on the touch screen. Install the pre-bayonet. Loosen the blade fixing plate. Install the pre-bayonet to the button. Lock the blade holder. Use the same method to install the remaining three pre bayonets The origin setting of the pre bayonet Rotate the machine to set the origin of the pre bayonet on the touch screen when the pre bayonet peers into the paper tube. Adjust the pre bayonet position. Alignment bayonet to center line across back width. If not, please adjust. Adjust pre-bayonet position by the operation side. Use an extended socket wrench to rotate the adjusting screw. Rotate the adjusting screw clockwise to move the position of the pre-bayonet outward. Rotate the adjusting screw counterclockwise to move the position of the pre-bayonet inward. The position of the pre-bayonet on the gear side is controlled by the motor. Long press the inward move button. The position of the pre-bayonet will move inward. Long press the outward move button. The position of the pre-bayonet will move outward. Adjust the level position of the pre-bayonet, that is, adjust the level position of the groove and the hand attention. Blade change. Loosen the screws on the holder. Install the automatic cutter between the fixed blocks. The length of the cutter is the same as before. Screw to lock the retaining block. Adjust the position of the cutter to align with the pre-bayonet position. When the cutter position is not aligned with the pre-bayonet position, adjust the host adjustment on the touch screen until it's aligned. Align the gluing position with the handle position. If the gluing position is not aligned with the position of the stick, on the touch screen to adjust the stick and glue adjustment until it's aligned. Adjust complete.